What is an anti-universe? You've heard about it lately. Another universe discovered where time goes backwards, where the laws of physics are completely opposite of those that we cherish in our own universe. What does it all mean? Is it just hype? Come along in this voyage into the heart of reality and the meaning of time and space itself. Symmetries are some of the most important aspects to physicists. It's been defined by Frank Wilczek and others as change without change. In other words, you perform some physical operation, some motion, some movement perhaps, and the properties of what you're observing don't change. You're familiar with this. If you take a circle and rotate it by any amount, it stays circular. If you take a snowflake and rotate it by multiples of 60 degrees, it remains basically the same shape. Those are symmetries under rotation. There are many different types of symmetries. And courtesy of Emmy Neuther, one of the greatest mathematicians of all time, we know that for every underlying symmetry in a physical law, there's something that's conserved. We already described two different things that are conserved, conservation of shape and actually conservation under translation and motion. Those are related to physical phenomena that we manifest as conservation of angular momentum, in the case of rotation, and the case of motion and symmetry without change, as you move the laws of physics of your laboratory don't change, that's conservation of momentum. We also have conservation of energy, conservation of charge, and other esoteric abstract spaces like isospin. And there's even something called supersymmetry, which is even more symmetric than ordinary symmetry. But now there's been a claim that one of the laws of physics underpinned by symmetry is leading some physicists to suspect there might be a so-called anti-universe, a universe parallel to ours in a certain sense, wherein time goes backwards. A recent paper by Latham Boyle and Neil Turok and collaborators suggests that there may be a so-called anti-universe, and it may explain some of the results we spoke about with my friend and colleague, Professor Abigail Vierig. So I always, I'm an experimentalist, which you know, and so I'll always, I'll answer the question about the data first. What else could it be background-wise? And then you publish the data. At that time, Abby was dubious about the claims made in the most prestigious of all scientific journals, the journal known as the New York Post. Well, the New York Post is at it again, along with a host of other venues, all touting the so-called anti-universe. What does it mean? What does it mean for you? Should we be anxious about another universe where time flows backwards? Could that allow us to go back in time? Oh, this is heavy. Well, not quite, but it does have a bearing on that very favorite subject of ours on this channel, experimental particle physics and neutrinos, two great tastes that go great together. Let's take a step back. We talked about symmetry under rotation and translation, but there are three other so-called discrete symmetries that are of paramount importance to physicists. The first one is so-called charge invariance, that the laws of physics don't discriminate between a positive and negative charge. In fact, if you reverse the charges of the proton and the electron, a hydrogen atom would still behave the same effectively as it does now. The charge is absolute. You put a negative sign in front of the existing charge and the laws of physics don't change. There's another phenomena closely allied with charge conservation and charge discrete symmetry inversion called parity inversion, that the laws of physics should not depend on whether or not you look at a phenomenon in the mirror or not. And that can be manifestly observed if you looked at, say, a pendulum swinging back and forth in a mirror. You couldn't tell if you were looking at the pendulum directly swinging or if you were looking at a mirror image or a reversed image. Now, this most recent result involves time symmetry. So another way to think about time reversal symmetry has to do with uh, so-called conservation of energy. But if you think about looking down from above in a God's eye view, perhaps, of our solar system, the planets orbiting in one direction, that would be completely indistinguishable if you were going above the plane of the, of the solar system, or if you were looking at it from below and reverse the time direction. So the motions of the planets don't seem to depend upon our convention of what we call time flowing positive and time flowing negative. And yet there is a series of different arrows of time that distinguish forward from backward. But when we think about time, can it be extracted from it? A universal definition in which time is somehow emerges from the micro laws of physics. Well, if it does, and those micro laws are independent of the coordinate that we call positive time versus negative time, then how should there be an arrow of time? So time symmetry is closely connected to conservation of energy. And in this current result, it makes use of a conjecture that was really a simplifying trick. It was one weird trick, not to help you lose weight, not to help you gain success in your business, but instead 
This was a trick that John Archibald Wheeler, who we've talked about in reference to the Bright Wheeler effect, where photons come together and create matter. They also conjectured that you could interpret antimatter as the propagation of ordinary matter backwards in time. In other words, the antiparticle of the electron is a positron. They conjectured that you could consider a positron traveling forward in time as an electron traveling backwards in time. And if you think about current flowing through a wire, positive current, if it's going this way, carried by electrons moving that way, if you reverse the direction of time, you could have positrons going this way and the current would still be flowing in that same direction. So when we talk about the anti-universe, we could mean many different things, but typically when scientists talk about it, they mean version of antimatter. So the antimatter for each fundamental particle is called anti, but there's really only historical reasons why we call it that. Similar to Ben Franklin considering the electron to have a negative charge versus a positive charge. When in fact the electrons are the things that are moving, some say old Ben should have referred to electrons as having positive charge. Nevertheless, when we talk about antimatter, we can think about inverting either the charge coordinate, if you like, changing all positive charges to negative charges, or converting all time coordinates to negative time coordinates, or the direction of time, to its opposite. And the physics will be indistinguishable. So an explanation for why we see so much more matter than antimatter in our universe owes to some violation of the symmetry, which we know has to be there. In fact, there were three conditions laid out by the great Soviet scientist Andrei Sakharov. They're known by the Sakharov conditions. They involve thermal equilibrium, violation of baryon number, and they also involve what's called CP violation. We talked about CP violation, we discussed what some of my Twitter followers claim to be the most important experiment of all time. Madame Wu's Christmas experiment in 1957 showed clearly that parity is not conserved, that you could distinguish the mirror world from our ordinary world. She did so using spinning cobalt-60 nuclei, as we discussed. The mirror dimension, where I'm in control. Well, CP violation doesn't hold in our universe. It's violated at a weak level, and that's one of the Sakharov conditions that lead to what's called baryogenesis, formation of matter, ordinary baryons, like protons and neutrons, and my favorite, the croutons. Now, if we could find a universe in which there was more antimatter than matter, would we be able to detect it? Would we be able to distinguish it? And then the question of whether or not this universe could be taken as not having opposite charges, but having an opposite time coordinate. That's the subject of this paper. This paper created so many headlines back in 2018 that we had to have on Dr. Abby Virig, who worked on the ANITA project, which seemed to suggest, according to the New York Post, that there was a multiverse. Now, the multiverse has many different garbs, as we've talked about in our interviews with folks such as Paul Steinhardt and Will Kinney. These discussions revolve really on the fact that there's multiple, multiple universes. There's the ever ready in many worlds hypothesis universe. The claim now is that all neutrinos that we observe are so-called left-handed neutrinos. Left-handed neutrinos are the only type of neutrinos that we find in nature. We also only find right-handed so-called anti-neutrinos. Now, this new result that caused such a fuss suggested that if there was a so-called sterile neutrino that was right-handed, not an anti-neutrino that are all right-handed, but an actual non-anti or <laughs> ordinary neutrino that was right-handed, that would interact not by any of the other forces and fields that we know about in nature, but would only interact via gravity. And in that sense, it could also be seen as a sort of candidate for a dark matter particle. And as you know, we've talked about in previous videos, neutrinos of any type, in this case, ordinary neutrinos, are the only form of dark matter we know exists. Dark matter is characterized by its non-interaction with ordinary matter, its non-emission or absorption of light. A sterile neutrino, one that doesn't interact with ordinary neutrinos, is one that could have mass. And so, because it has mass, it would interact only gravitationally, not with other weak particles, not with the strong force, obviously, and not with the electromagnetic force, or else it would give off light or absorb light and wouldn't be dark. So this is a fascinating conjecture. Now, where does it leave us? Well, it's one type of multiverse. Okay. It may be another universe that predated ours, sort of going backwards in time and then leading to the initiation of our universe in the ordinary Big Bang. It could be, though, that this is a sort of a parallel universe, as was originally conjectured in the New York Post article, at least. Now, the evidence for these uh, sterile neutrinos is marginal at best, and astronomers such as Abby and her colleagues are hard at work on upgrading the, the types of experiments like the ANITA experiment. 
That's not the only way, though, that we could exclude, rule out, or falsify the claims of the so-called anti-universe where time goes backwards. It could be that if we do discover there is a single origin of time characterized by excessively low entropy prior to the formation of nuclei during the Big Bang nucleosynthesis epoch, that this epoch of inflation would produce an observable signal that we hopefully would see the Simons Observatory and with the bicep array experiment and other experiments that are ongoing around the world. And note that it can't be seen, in my opinion, by just one team uh, for us to have credibility after the events that I've described previously on this channel and in my book, Losing the Nobel Prize. We need to have multiple confirmations of the signal before other scientists and other fields ranging from metaphysics to particle physics will accept the credulity in our discovery of primordial gravitational waves. But if we do detect gravitational waves, that would be strong, circumstantial, but still strongest evidence to date that inflation took place, which would mean that time behaves as we expect it to in an ordinary fashion, that there was no backwards flowing time, at least in our universe. So we have many avenues of experimental falsification, disconfirmation, or confirmation that could lead to a whole host of models being accepted or refuted, both this backwards time-flowing universe and even refuting inflation if we can discover some evidence potentially for a bouncing cosmological model as we've talked about. Now we'll have on co-author, along with Paul Steinhardt and Aegis in an upcoming video, she is a world's expert on the bouncing cosmological models. So stay tuned for that. And if you like videos like this, we talk about alternative cosmologies in the multiverse, I know you're gonna love this playlist that I've curated specially for you. Click here and don't forget to subscribe.